the Joan of Arc Tower, locally known as the Tour Ginti Arc, lies in the center of the city of Ruo. And the tower is actually a keep of the former Ruo Castle, a fortified ducal and royal residence in the city of Ruo, capital of the Duchy of Normandy, now in France. The tower is about 35 meters high and a rare existing example of a round keep in Normandy. Rouault Castle was built between 1204 and 1210 by King Philip II of France after he had forcibly taken the city from King John of England, also Duke of Normandy. It was built on a hill overlooking the city on the site of a Gallo-Roman amphitheater. The castle was somewhat elliptical in shape and was equipped with 10 towers, 3 gates, an outer bailey, and surrounded by 6 meter wide and deep dry moat. Located outside the medieval town to its north, in a dominant position, it played a military role in the Hundred Years' War and the Wars of Religion. It was the main seat of power, administration, and politics in the Duchy of Normandy for nearly 400 years. In 1358, the citizens of Ruo besieged the castle, as they were convinced the Dauphin Charles was planning to pillage the city from the castle to finance the wars. The garrison in the castle surrendered, and after Charles had convinced them it was false, he regained control over the castle. Around 1375, the former Dauphin, now King Charles V of France, transformed the royal apartments. In 1419, after a six-month siege, King Henry V of England took the city of Ruo. He took up residence in the castle and had the castle adapted to artillery and new war techniques. In 1430, Joan of Arc was held prisoner here for several months. She was a peasant girl who, believing that she was acting under divine guidance, led the French army in a momentous victory at Orleans in 1429 that repulsed the English attempt to conquer France during the Hundred Years' War. The Maid of Orleans, as the French heroine was known, had been captured by the English at the Siege of Compagnie, her final battle. She was jailed at Boubray Castle where she tried to escape several times, almost succeeding on one occasion and so was moved to the castle of Rouen which was considered scape proof French forces attacked the city several times in the months that followed, in a desperate attempt to rescue her, but each time they were forced to withdraw. She was not in prison in this tower, but in the now lost Tour de la Pucelle, whose foundations can still be seen. But she was questioned here, hence its present name. This tower is formerly known as the Gruss Tour, part of Philip's 1204 phase. Joan was put on trial here for heresy on June 9, 1431. Both the English and Burgundians rejoiced that Joan had been removed as a military threat, fearing her because she appeared to have supernatural powers that undermined morale. She also posed as a political threat. Joan testified that her voices had instructed her to defeat the English and crown Charles, and her success was argued to be evidence of acting on behalf of God. If unchallenged, her testimony would invalidate the English claim to the rule of France and undermine the University of Paris, which supported a dual monarchy ruled by an English king. Her guilt could also be used to compromise Charles' claims to legitimacy by showing that he had been consecrated by the act of a heretic. The verdict was a foregone conclusion. Bishop Cusho, who served as a judge, was a partisan supporter of the Duke of Burgundy and the English crown. The English crown also subsidized the cost of the trial and paid Cusho for his participation in it. The clergy who participated in the trial were pro-Burgundian and pro-English over two-thirds of whom were associated with the pro-English University of Paris. Cusho attempted to follow the correct inquisitorial procedure, but the trial had many irregularities. Although Joan should have been in the hands of the church during the trial and guarded by women, she was imprisoned by the English, 
and guarded by ordinary soldiers under the service of the Duke of Bedford. Contrary to canon law, Kushu had not established Joan's charges before proceeding with the trial process. Her charges was not read until long after her interrogations began. The procedures were below standards, subjecting Joan to lengthy interrogations without legal counsel. There is evidence that the trial records were falsified. During the trial, Joan showed remarkable control. Some of her requests, such as having her fetters removed, allowing a more balanced tribunal by adding clerics from the pro armageniac side, and her appeal to the Pope, were denied by the judge. But she was able to induce her interrogators to ask questions sequentially rather than simultaneously, referring back to the records when appropriate and end the sessions when she requested. Witnesses at the trial were impressed by her prudence when answering the question posed to her. To convince her to submit, Joan was shown the instruments of torture. When she refused to be intimidated, Kusha met with about a dozen assessors to vote whether she should be tortured. Though three voted in favor, the majority decided against it. On May 23rd, Joan was given the formal admonition of the court using the 12 articles of accusation that summarized the court's allegation that Joan was guilty of heresy. The next day, she was taken out to the churchyard for public condemnation. As Kusha began to read the sentence, Joan agreed to abjure. She signed the abjuration document that she was given, which she was not able to understand as she was illiterate, and most of it was written in Latin. Unfortunately, she would eventually be executed due to a relapse on her part. And although the English and Burgundians may have achieved their goal of humiliating the French in a short term, in the long term, they were to fail spectacularly. In the centuries to come, Joan of Arc became not only a saint, but a beloved and immortalized historical figure. So now you know what happened to Joan of Arc here, so back to the castle and the keep. On the night of 1432, French troops took Rouen Castle with the help of a traitor. When the English discovered this, they laid siege to the castle. During the fierce battles, the French troops retreated to the keep. But 17 days after they had taken control of the castle, they had to surrender and were beheaded. During this siege, the castle was badly damaged and it was consequently repaired by the English. In 1449, King Charles VII of France regained control over Rouen and its castle. In 1485, King Charles VIII of France presided over the meetings of the Normandy Excature in Rouen Castle. In 1499, King Louis XII decided to turn the Normandy Excature into a permanent court of justice and had it moved to a new building in the city. This ended the castle's role of royal residence and seat of administration. During the 16th century, the castle fell into disrepair and vulnerable to artillery like other medieval fortresses. All but the keep was dismantled in 1591. The keep was left standing as were parts of some other towers and small fragments of walls. Later, these were also raised to the ground to make way for urban buildings, leaving only the keep as a remnant. In the 19th century, the Joan of Arc Tower was restored with the help of the famous French architect Pulet Leduc. During the Second World War, German troops occupied the tower and made it more bomb-proof when they constructed a 2-meter thick concrete slab in the attic of the tower. Today, the tower is used as a museum which you could visit for a small fee. That's it guys, to know more about Joan of Arc, check out the description below for the links. The Ruo Castle, or should I say the Keep, could never survive the centuries if it weren't for its famous prisoner.
Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Bye! So guys, if you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and feel free to comment. Hit the bell, hit the bell, hit the bell, hit the bell, come on guys, hit the bell! For notifications! And don't forget to share! And like!